power of the plague, come to restore us in your image, remake us into your people, and rebuild what sin has broken, that we and the whole creation may rejoice. Amen. Fear not, people of God. The Almighty has done great things for us. God casts away our sin from us and makes of us a new creation. In Jesus Christ, God comes to set you free. Take heart in the tender compassion of our God. Amen. And now, it is with joy that we gather our voices together to sing hymn number 275.
your abundant grace and might free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Then Isaiah said, 
Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you, weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 80. Psalms are found in your hymnals after page 338. And we will read responsibly. Oh, they're in your ready books. They're in your worship books. Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth that you are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come out to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O oh, Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume and your new glory? You have fed them with the bread of tears, you have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 1, in your two Bibles, from pages 913 to 914. In this reading, we learn most of the Christians in Rome do not know Paul. In his, this letter's opening, he introduces himself as an apostle divinely appointed to spread God's gospel. The gospel's content is the promised coming of Christ, and Paul's mission is to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations, including his Roman audience. Now the reading from Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God <coughs> our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel affirmation, which we will recite together. <coughs> Hallelujah. The, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the first verse, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. 
But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relationships with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated.
of another way of looking at the story of the birth of the king. And it comes from Matthew. So first, grace, mercy, and peace to you all this day in the name of the scandalous king, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When I say the word scandal, what does that mean to you? Do you have a, you have a definition for scandal? Sexual sin. Sexual sin. Wow. That, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what else? <laughs> think, think that, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> it is something which causes public outrage. Scandal. I understand there's a TV show called Scandal on now, my daughter told me. I can't imagine watching it. A situation or an event that causes public outrage or that require, it requires a censoring of people. It's disgraceful. <laughs> it's an offensive. It causes damage. Scandal is a publicized incident that brings about disgrace or offends the moral sensibilities of the greater society. Welcome to the Christmas story. Hang on. Because I begin this sermon this day with what I call a Christmas Day scandal story. One of the gifts of being a second career pastor is the stories that I can bring to you are profound. The listener with the ears to listen to God's good word and you are hoping for a new way possibly to embrace the story this year. It can get a little ho-hum. But this year, we're going to look at the scripture story in what we believe to be the most accurate of ways. Today I have a story that I have been waiting to use, waiting to use. It's a story of a scandal. It's a story of surprise, confusion, fear, and finally, joy. It's a story that mirrors the gospel scandal in today's text. Listen now to one nurse's story of a Christmas Day scandal from 35 years ago. Christmas Day, 35 years ago, I was working at a hospital in downtown Baltimore, and I was assigned, was a labor and delivery nurse. That was my specialty. And I was working that day in labor and delivery with one other nurse. About 9 a.m., the emergency room called us and they had an amazing story. They had a young woman who was on her way up to see us. She was 19 years old and pregnant. She was unmarried and alone. Well, so far, we weren't amazed. The story was not so different from our other clients that we had been seeing and tending to in labor because of where the hospital was. Before I could just shrug off this call from the ER as a, just a simple message about an impending case for us to deal with, the nurse added one fact. She said, by the way, this young woman did not, does not know, does not accept, cannot say and recognize that she's nine months pregnant. She has no idea, idea how she came to this condition. She has no idea what's going on with her but she's an active labor. You nurses, the ER nurse side, will have to handle the mess. The Christmas scandal was at hand. Over the next two hours, two labor delivery nurses and one doctor dealt with a very frightened 19-year-old girl in her final stages of labor. She was angry, she was frightened, as were her parents who finally got to the scene, and a myriad of friends and neighbors of this young girl then piled in to the waiting room to be part of the event. What stands out in my mind most, what rests in my heart and memory banks most about this Christmas scandal was not how it all happened but rather the people in the waiting room and the family and the young girl herself. We watched a scandalous, hard to believe story into great joy. 
Imagine being told your daughter is going to deliver. She's not pregnant. Oh, yes, she is. Imagine dealing with a young girl who can't even conceive of what's going on with her, and yet she's in labor. We, the workers and the observers of what was happening that Christmas morning, watched a very unique story unfold. Three days after all was said and done, after all the gyrations of this can't be, of all the comments, this must be wrong, how dare she, of all the ins innuendos and harsh comments that we were fielding from family and friends. Three days later, the mother, the baby, and the baby's father, plus a cart filled with gifts and flowers, left us to go home to begin life anew. A great scandal for Christmas Day had turned into a gifted, life-changing moment with a story that was just beginning to unfold. A story which no longer included us, the staff at the hospital. I wonder, I, I've always wondered what that baby is doing now, 35 years later. What is this young man up to? What was his life like amidst the scandalous situation of his birth? How did his parents manage after such a difficult start? I wonder, was his life as scandalous as his birth? Today, today, Matthew gives us a brief snapshot of another Christmas scandal. It reads like a simple, in, simple paragraph in the local newspaper. It's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. The birth of Jesus, according to Matthew, has nothing special going on. It's just something that had to be reported. <laughs> The power in the story is in its scandalous nature. The beginning of a life that would be surrounded by the abnormal, the questionable, the confusing, the confounding, and the countercultural. Jesus did not come to waiting arms. Jesus came to people who were ready to stone his mother. This life of Jesus, this scandalous life, also ends in scandal. A thief's death on a cross <coughs> of shame. We are observers of his life through our scripture studies, through our worships, and through our readings. We are invited into the most significant parts of Jesus' life through intentional Bible study where we learn more about the scandalous nature of his life and the extreme nature of his love. Our lives join in his scandal through the sacraments, don't they? Think about that. We join with this scandalous experience through baptism, through Holy Communion, we are part of a scandalous story. Come to think of it, through the world's eyes, we are just as scandalous as our Lord. Think about how the world greets you as a Christian. Think about the almost embarrassing moments of being able to say, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus. Think about how that doesn't necessarily easily roll off our eyes because we do not want to create a scandal amongst friends and co-workers and people at the giant. We are a scandal, says our Lord. We are people, my friends, who proclaim that an unwed mother's child is our King of kings and Lord of lords. We become part of the scandal of his life his death and his resurrection. We bury our dead 
with the hope and the sentiments and the words which express a desire to be reunited with the scandalous, sacred being in an eternal realm. Matthew allows us to enter into the story of the Messiah as an everyday Joe or Jill accompanying the Prince of Peace. Simply stated, no glitz, no glamour. In the reality of it all, Matthew invites us into the shared scandal of his life. When was the last time you embraced how difficult the story is? When was the last time we embraced the scandalous nature of the age? When was the last time we were ready to proclaim ourselves as Christians? in a world that says, so what? A little personal testimony comes with this experience today. When we began preparing for our Advent worship series, October, we had purchased something, we had purchased a CD-ROM. We had purchased through Sundays and Seasons, which is our lectionary aid device, um, many ways in which to present to you people scandal. A new way to envision the King of Kings and your life committed to that King of Kings. And when I opened it up and looked at the different things that they suggested we talk about for four Sundays in Advent, when I came to scandal, I thought, oh, hot dog, this is going to be good. This is not a place that we've ever been before. And yet the more I read and the more I <coughs> studied and after re-watching the Nativity story the past two weeks with our Bible study group and after dabbing away tears at the gift of the story and all of its brutality because it's a brutal story, I couldn't help but bring to you what I think is the real culmination of the idea of being tied to a scandalous story, and that is this. Our God did not come clean and pretty and easy, did he? Did he? Is this a clean and easy story? It's not. We want it to be. We want it to be nice and simple and, and clean without complications, but it's not. Yet we join with this God in baptism, in the sacraments, in our worship, in our hymnody. We join with this scandal because we don't care what the Lord, we don't care what the world says. We know who our Lord is. And so the Messiah does not come as a king with all radiance, but rather as a baby shrouded in scandal to join us in our scandals. comes to us in our humanity in a very human nature, in a very human way. And so the great King of Kings understands our stuff. And one of the things a pastor will often hear in counseling sessions is, how could God know what I'm going through? Because God went through it. And for me, Stole off, simple Christian. Thank you. My God understands me. My God understands the scandalous nature of me. My distrusts, my problems, my issues, my stuff. That's how my God came. Thanks be to God, I have a scandalous King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I invite you in all the glory of this season to spend some time thinking about how your Lord has come to you and rejoice. 
not because it's perfect, but because it's scandalous. Amen. Please stand for our tip of the day, number 257. Unless y'all want to sing, what is it, 22 verses? <laughs> One through four.